Hi, my name's Jem. I'd like to welcome you to this training film. Stay smart, stay safe. We'll be showing you the correct procedure to how to change a smart meter, and more importantly, how to change it safely. For some of you, this may be a recap, but for others, this could be something completely new. Either way, pay attention. The next five minutes could save your life or, at very least, help you avoid an accident, minor injury, power outages, or company fines. Hi Steve, how's Michelle? She's great, thanks. A little bit tired, but six weeks left to go. And what does she always say, Steve? Stay smart, stay safe. So, before you leave, have you done your vehicle checks and got your PPE together? Yes. We have insulated gloves, eye protection, safety footwear, a full face visor, flame retardant clothing, all checked and fit for purpose. Once you've checked your stock in prep for your daily workload, check your route and call the customer. Check that they are expecting you and ask if there's any parking restrictions or issues with access. While Steve's on the phone, let me introduce you to my boys. They guided me through my training and have taught me everything I know. Hi guys. Oh, you haven't started on the biscuits already, have you? Morning, Jem. You know us well. Me and the boys will be keeping a watchful eye over Steve, making sure he... Stays smart, stays safe. arrive at the customer's property, you will need to carry out a general risk assessment in line with the safe working procedure, generic risk assessment. If you see any potential risk, you need to record the details and inform the appropriate support service. Remember, you should be continually assessing your situation and potential risks. If there is damage and something doesn't look as it should, you must report to your appropriate support service. On arrival, remember to show your badge. Introduce yourself to the customer, explain what the job entails, and then tell them how many sugars you take. And what biscuits you like. We are at the meter, so you will need eye protection, just like you did in training. Check the serial number against the information on the HHU to ensure you're at the right meter. Read the meter and take down details for future billing and prepayment. If there is damage or something does not look as it should, you must report to the appropriate support service. Test the customer's sockets with an approved polarity tester. Three lights and a buzz and you're good to carry on. If they're not correct, test another socket. If they're still not correct, inform your tech spec and support service team. Record details on the HHU. If any socket is incorrect, then a do not use label should be stuck on the faulty socket outlet and the customer should be informed. Given the fault card TOE8, I'm told to contact their own electrician to rectify the fault. So, using an approved fault stick, first prove the operation of the fault stick with an integral proving unit and or on an own supply. Test any exposed metalwork for signs of voltage with volt stick and prove volt stick. If the test is incorrect at any of the above points, then call the support service team. Check polarity indication across meter position and customer's main switch with volt stick. And reprove volt stick. Remember, T-U-T, test, use, test. If the polarity is incorrect at any of the above points, then call the support service team. Test, test use, test. test. It's a good idea to take a photo of the meter, cables and circuit boards, and depending on your company's procedures, you may be required to log their states. Ask the customer to turn their equipment off, and then ask the customer if you can turn the power off. When you do this, the buzzer will go off on the socket tester. Check nothing is being recorded at the meter and check the position of the breakers on the consumer unit. They need to be in the same position when you finish the job. 
and now you're good to start the exchange. At this point, you will need your eye protection. A visual risk assessment of the cutout, meter board and surrounding cables must be undertaken before the seals are removed. Remember, all seals need to be removed and disposed of appropriately. At this point, you will need your full PPE, insulated gloves, flame retardant overalls and full face visor. Ensure insulated gloves and full face visor are fit for purpose. It's a good idea to check for holes in your gloves like this. Surrounding pipe and metalwork that is anywhere near a live terminal must be shrouded using issued insulating material. This will prevent contact with the live parts of the metering installation. Pull out the fuse. Once it has been removed, the exposed live contact of the cutout must be insulated where possible to protect against direct contact of the live incoming cutout terminal. removed, insert cutout shrouds. After confirming the meter is not live using test lamp PUT, full face visor and insulated gloves can be removed. That will depend on your company's procedure of course. You will need to identify all tails using your company's supplied markers. Brown for the phases and blue for the neutrals. One tag identifies cut out to meter. Two tags identify from the meter to the customer's supply. Three tags identify the customer's off-peak. You may leave old identification markings on the tails and ensure to install the correct meter and tariff. Remember, you would only change method payment type if indicated on the job instruction. If load tails are in poor condition, damaged or undersized, install isolator as per code of practice and leave fault card TOE8. Now you have fitted the meter and the cables are in place, using insulated tools ensure that all terminals are checked for tightness. Loose connections can cause fires. Check the meter, isolator, outgoing side of the cutout, neutral block and other associated equipment terminals. Full face visor, insulated gloves and flame retardant clothing are required when working on the cutout. Visually inspect the installation, ensuring cables, sequence of cables and markers are all correct. No exposed inner insulation or copper should be showing. Bungs are fitted in exposed empty terminals and all redundant equipment and cables are removed and made safe. Check that the fuse rating is compliant. Ensure the carrier is marked with the fuse size. Then replace the cutout fuse carrier. Replace the neutral cover and install the main fuse carrier into the cutout. You need to make sure where possible that firstly the fuse carrier is inserted into the outgoing side of the cutout and then the live side. Again, a full face visor, insulated gloves, flame retardant clothing are required when replacing the fuse into the cutout. Confirm the polarity of the meter equipment using your volt stick. Prove the operation of the volt stick with its integral proving unit or on a known supply. It is important to check this before switching on the customer supply. Remember, TUT, test, use, test. Test, use, test. Once you've confirmed the meter's working correctly, inform the customer that you're turning the power on. Then switch on the customer's main switch. Make sure the switches are in the same position 
as they were pre-exchange or when you arrived. Don't forget to check your switches are the same, Steve. It's a good job I took those photos earlier. Using the same socket tester and the same plug socket as you did pre-exchange, carry out a polarity test. If the result is correct, three lights and a buzz, continue with the work. If incorrect, recheck your work and rectify the fault. If you are unable to rectify, then contact the support service team and they will tell you how to proceed. Seal all equipment, remove all waste and leave old and new meter readings. Conduct a final visual inspection to make sure the work area is left clean and tidy. Make sure that it complies with the requirements of a quality audit and this code of practice. Let the customer know that you've finished the exchange and show them how to read the meter. Take your kit and say a final goodbye and thank you. Nice work, Steve. You've got a good one there, Jem. That's because you've always taught me to stay smart, stay safe.